All right, what's going on you guys? It's Resto, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the 19 Twink Priest. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the gear, the best in slot gear choices, as well as the alternatives until you're able to obtain those best in slots. I'm also going to be going over the talents, the typical builds that you guys are going to be using throughout your battleground experiences. And I'm also going to be covering some tips and tricks just to kind of help you guys make your PvP a little bit smoother and a little bit more enjoyable. But without further ado, let's get right into this guide. All right, you guys, welcome back. Uh, we're moving on to the priest. I make these long guides to educate you guys so you guys don't have to do hours of research yourself. Um, so moving into the priest, uh, there's really not much to it, mainly used for healing. Um, you can also FC as one, you can also DPS as one. Uh, what I'm going to be showing here today is mainly the uh, healing build that you can also utilize as a DPS build if you really wanted to. Um, but moving into it, uh, we're looking at the Lucky Fishing Hat. Um, as always, it's going to be the go-to, starting with the Horde side, by the way. Um, get this every Sunday around 4 p.m. on your server. Depending on your server and what you're playing on, uh, the competition may be high, may be low. It really just depends on where you are. Um, now, when it comes down to getting this hat, you just got to fish out the Kiefer's Angler Fish. Now, take in consideration, you don't have to get this during the competition. Uh, you can do it through the whole event. So, you have multiple hours to do this for. Uh, moving on to the neck, we're looking at the Scouts Medallion, the PvP neck, like I mentioned in every video, guys. Uh, going into the uh, PvP neck, you can get this easily with, on a BG weekend for Warsong Gulch um, within a single game. Um, same with the ring. You can get, you guys could probably get both of them in the same game, honestly, if you guys have a really good game focusing on objectives. Always focus objectives, guys. Mid and graveyard farms do nothing. Um, so going into this, this is what you guys are going to go for. These are the go-to rings pretty much for every tune, um, depending on what class you are. There is no alternative for the neck, so this is going to be sticking around for quite some time. Uh, moving on to the shoulders, you're looking at the Tattered Dresmus Mantle. Um, this is going to be you guys' go-to easy heirloom. If you guys have 80s, there's really no alternative unless you want to rock the green um, Talbar Mantle, but I really don't recommend that. Everyone has 80s now. This is super easy accessible. There should be no excuse to not be able to get an heirloom. Um, you can honestly get an heirloom. Uh, depending on how many tunes you have, you can get up to three, four, five a day, right? All you have to do is do all the heroics, and you'll easily get every single heirloom, guys. Um, Nax is out with Uldor, so, I mean, you can convert your uh, emblems into heroism now. So, I mean, there's there's multiple different ways to get these emblems, guys. Super easy to obtain heirlooms um, with this current day of age. Uh, moving on to the cloak, we're looking at the spider silk drape. Um, this is another crafted uh, cloak that a lot of classes will be wearing. Uh, there's really nothing comparable to this. Uh, with this, you're going to have 70 armor uh, lobbed onto it, but just like I mentioned with every other cloak and the other videos, when it comes down to the cloaks, make sure you guys have multiple of the same cloak. That way you can put multiple enchants on them. Um, hence, 70 armor. Uh, you're looking at the all resistance. You're looking at shadow resistance. Now, the reason why you want these three enchants, or maybe even more if you really want to go above and beyond, um, is just for different scenarios, right? Not every single battleground that you're going to go into is going to be full of melee right so 70 armor isn't really going to do much against you with a caster so you're going to put all resistance on or maybe you have uh, a bunch of priests and warlocks and they're super decked out in gear like they're twinks as well well you're going to throw a shadow resistance on there so this is something that you guys got to take in consideration if you guys really want to optimize your twink and be the best of the best uh, this is going to be a way to kind of do that it's just being prepared and kind of adapting to your surroundings uh, moving on to the chest, there's really nothing else comparable to this but the Inferno Robe. This comes from a quest. Um, you guys are going to put on the MP5 enchant on this. Uh, mainly with a priest, you're really looking at a lot of MP5 stuff here. Uh, you want to be able to maintain your mana. Um, as a priest, you're going to be utilizing mana constantly. I cannot stress this enough. You guys are the main healers. You guys are going to be utilizing your mana. You're going to go oom fast. So having these MP5s is going to be super nice for when you're out in mid and healing other people. 
Um, so with that being said, uh, going into professions, I know this is kind of a quick little jump, um, but I recommend going with herbalism. Now, this herbalism is going to be super, super, super nice for every single twink that you make. There's really no other alternative for this. This should be the only main profession that you guys all have is because of the 720 healing that it provides. It is unbeatable. Uh, this is really nice for a healer as well. If you're going oom, um, why waste mana on yourself when you can just pop one of these and utilize the mana for your team and able to keep pumping? You got to think outside the box. You got to think smart. Um, being able to stay up on mana while in team fights will help your team win and move on and getting to the flag. So this is something that you guys got to consider in terms of playing in the mid um, and helping your team win those team fights. So that being said, moving on to the bracers uh, with the other MP5 enchant, you're going with the crystalline cuffs. Uh, the main point of this is the spirit um, and the intellect, of course, but the spell power is going to help increase the magnitude of your guys' spells. So this is a really good uh, bracer to kind of go for. Um, there are other bracers out there, but they're not going to have the spell power. So if you really want some stamina, you could do that. But just know that you're missing out on the spell power and the spirit as well. So up to you, but this is uh, going to be your guys' go-to in terms of bracers for a priest. Um, moving on to the gloves. Now, you don't have to get jute break gloves. You could go with serpent gloves. I go with jute break gloves like I mentioned in every other video. I love to be unique. I like unique items. I like unique things on my twink. I like to stand out. I don't like generic basic things that everybody can get because then you just kind of fit one within, right? I like to be an outcast in terms of gear. I just like to be able to look unique. Um, that's the whole view of my version of twink um, it's just being unique having the best of the best gear and just standing out you know it's it's about looking cool right <laughs> that's why I, that's how i look at a twink uh, moving on to the belt you guys are looking at the keller's girdle it's going to optimize your most intellect possible uh, with a little bit of stam as well it's going to be the best belt for the cloth wearers um, as you know girdle blind watcher and all that other stuff is leather we got some male belts as well so this is going to be your guys's cloth version of the best intellect option uh, moving on to the pants, you guys are looking at the Dark Weave Britches. Uh, this is going to be a very, very nice pant a piece to have because of that sick spirit. Um, it's very nice to have in terms of regeneration. Uh, you guys are going to slap 24 armor on here. Now, what I recommend is sending the piece to one of your characters that have uh, that's that doesn't have, but is level 20 or above. Um, reason being is you need to be level 20 to apply this enchant anyways, um, but you are risking any error from happening. Uh, if something happens, it's on them. I'd rather the issue be on me and be my fault and blame myself rather than having to blame somebody else because they wanted to screw up or they were too tired, whatever the case is. Always do the stuff yourself if you guys can. Um, always resort to friends if you can't do it by yourself. And then last case scenario, rely on a stranger because you got no one else around you. Um, moving on to the boots you guys are looking at the spider silk boots these are going to be your pretty much only boots that you guys are going to be wearing uh, for any type of set that you go for you're going to throw on some minor speed increase for this now if you don't find yourself needing to kite a lot which I hope you are because you're going to be a main attraction since you're a main healer. Um, you can go ahead and throw seven stamina on here as well if you're not too fond of your health. If you're finding yourself dying a lot and you're not able to, you know, maneuver as good as others, then throw on some seven stamina. You are going to risk uh, being able to lose some speed um, on foot. So just take that in consideration when you guys are making that swap on your enchants. Uh, moving on to the rings, you guys are looking at the advisor ring. This is going to be a PvP ring that you guys can get, just like the neck. Like I said, guys, this is super easy to get. You can get each neck and ring um, and within two to three games on a non-BG weekend, and then you can get both rings within a game or two. Like This is super easy to get. There, there should be no hassle with this whatsoever. Uh, moving on to the other ring, you're looking at lavishly jeweled ring, and this is very nice for the hit. Um, that's honestly the main reason why we're going for this, but also to boost the intellect. It is the only ring that have this much intel. So it is nice to have this extra hit as well, even though you're not hitting max hit cap, but this does help with your hit cap. So definitely go with this ring. Um, like I mentioned with the bracers, you guys can go with other rings um, like Seal of Rin. Uh, you got metal rings. You got uh, multiple other things that you guys can use uh, to utilize for your builds. But you guys definitely don't have to run this, although it is highly recommended to run this because of the intel boost and your hit. 
Um, definitely want to be able to land those spells and make sure your teammates are getting healed. Um, so going on to the bright, uh, not the bracers, the trinkets. You guys are looking at the basic duo, right? This is going to be the go-to duo for any twink that you go for. However, if you guys cannot get the AGM, definitely go and get your guys uh, seven spell power heirloom trinket. Um, definitely easy accessible. Like I said before, it's just another heirloom, um, but definitely use that as an alternative until you're able to get an AGM. Um, these two are going to be your greatest friends, uh, mainly because of the resilience and the bubble. The bubble and the stamina are definitely going to help boost it up a little bit as you can see with an AGM that barely breaks us into a thousand um, HP. Take in consideration, I am unbuffed. Um, this is no buffs included, so obviously with buffs, I'm going to be a little bit higher, so there is that as well. I like to show all the tunes raw with no buffs included. I also don't have any talents uh, equipped on these tunes. I like to do them just raw, so that way you guys can see exactly what you're getting out of the twink. Uh, moving on to the weapons. So we're looking at the Gravestone Scepter here. Um, you could go with the Sunrod. Now, you don't have to. I recommend going with the Gravestone Scepter because when you go Oom, um, you can start wanding people. Um, this is obviously going to give you the most damage in terms of uh, wand DPS. Um, so definitely recommend going with this over the other one. Now, if you want some extra stats, by all means, go for it. But the reason why uh, I recommend this, it does add a little bit of spirit and shadow resistance to this. So it kind of makes you a little bit more versatile tile um, as a priest so this definitely is a good one to go for as a priest however like I said before you could rock the other one um, the banshee rod so definitely rock with that make sure it's of the sun though uh, moving up to the weapons you guys are looking at the devout hour stone heirloom weapon you're gonna slap 22 intellect on this the main goal with the priest guys is to make sure you have a big mana pool definitely want to consume a lot of mana um, to be able to heal your teammates so to do that you definitely want a lot of play around room with uh, moving on to the offhand, uh, we don't have the heirloom uh, offhand yet, so you're going to rock the Furbolg Medicine Pouch for that stamina increase. Get that barrier of 1000 HP. Um, there are other options that you guys can go for as well. Let's say you guys are Oom um, and you're able to get out of combat a little bit. Definitely swap into these weapons, the Staff of Freer and the Staff of Westfall. Um, the Staff of Freer is going to be for the Horde and the... Um, I should say the horde only, but only for the horde uh, in terms of options because this is the only one that you guys could get. Um, in terms of the alliance, do you guys have the option between Staff of Westfall or the Staff of Freer? Now, what one you want to choose is up to you. They both provide 31 intellect. One provides two intellect more. One provides four stamina. So it really depends on what you want. If you don't really care, just get what's whatever is easier for you. Um, that's what I would recommend because they both provide it. The only purpose of these staffs anyways is just to go for the intellect. Um, uh, regeneration so I mean honestly if you guys want to boost the max amount of intellect with the mp5 with max spirit go with something that's gonna give you more intel so that way you're able to increase a bigger pool um, completely up to you what you want to do um, definitely can go with the bluff uh, the bless hammer of grace as well if you guys don't want to do the 22 intellect on your mace so go ahead and go with whatever one you guys desire um, I recommend rocking this with everything else here um, that way you guys are optimizing your mana pool and your mana regeneration that's just me uh, moving on to the alliance version of this a few things change not really much um, as you can see it's just mainly the um, alliance and horde designated items so you obviously you're going to change into the horde p or the alliance pvp ring and the alliance pvp neck and then obviously the alliance don't have access to the jupe break gloves so you guys are gonna rock the serpent's gloves literally the same stat guys there's nothing much being lost here um, it's just a different name uh, something that everyone can get uh, same thing with the um, chest. You guys aren't going to be able to have access to the Infernal Robe. So you guys are going to go ahead and swap into the Heirloom uh, chest piece. So put four stats on this one. Um, this is going to give you guys all around uh, a little bit more stuff to play around with. As you can see, the intellect pool is a little higher and so is the health pool. Um, it's because of these little uh, enchant changes. So just take that in consideration. Uh, you guys are going to have to swap out a little bit if you are going for the alliance faction. Same thing like I mentioned before. If you want to swap out the lavishly jeweled ring, no problem. Go with Seal of Rin. Right? Like I said, you guys can rock out any ring that you want. Um, I just recommend having this duo for both factions just because you guys are increasing that hit, you're increasing your intellect pull. Like I said, it's all preference, completely up to you guys what you do. 
Um, that's just what I'm saying. Um, as an alliance human, you guys do have a racial that is a trinket already. So go ahead and take rid of this. Just put on another AGM or go ahead and put the heirloom trinket on. Give yourself some more spell power. Give yourself some more haste. Whatever you want to do. Obviously, I recommend spell power to increase the magnitude of your spells. You also get a little bit of a 2% uh, regeneration back after every kill that you get. So that is something that I would take into consideration as well. Um, considering humans don't need a trinket since you guys already have one. Uh, on to the FCs though, uh, Priest FCing can be very interesting. I love how sophisticated a Draenei sits. Honestly, I never realized it until now, but it's, it's pretty amusing. Um, you're on the shoulders, you're going to swap out into the Resilience Cloth version, the Exquisite Sunderseer Mantle. Um, put this on for the Resilience, the whole point of an FC is to stack Resil. So if you guys want, swap this out, like I said, for this, if you guys want to have some Resilience going on, um, completely up to you, don't have to. Like I said, I always recommend having that good amount of mana set up for you, um, but at the end of the day, it's up to you whether or not you guys want to swap those two items out. Um, moving on to the chest piece. So you guys are going to rock the bloody apron. This is going to be the most stamina. Pretty much think of it like a Tuffin's leathered armor for the Druid FC, right? This is going to be the cloth version of the Tuffin leathered armor. Um, definitely get this. It's going to be 12 stamina. You're going to slap on 100 health on this. It's going to help increase that health pool a little bit more. Um, just know as an FC, you guys are mainly looking at a, a raid boss build. You guys want a lot of HP with an even build of mana depending on your class. Uh, and same with the bracers guys green weave bracers of the stamina um, go ahead and get the four stamina and slap some nine stamina on here now you don't have to get the green weave you can also go with shimmering right whatever's available both are the same you don't have to do one or the other just know you have options if one's not available or one's easier to get whatever the whatever your situation is on your server um, you guys can go with both if one's not available or both are available one's cheaper one's more expensive doesn't matter um, some are easier to get so they might be cheaper than others that's I know that's how some prices vary um, but that is a consideration that you guys can look at as well uh, on to the gloves you guys will look at the pagan mitts of the eagle this is going to give you guys a good median um, just like the druid the four stamina for intellect um, so definitely rock this out same with the belt you're looking at the bright belt four stamina for intel this is going to give you guys a good median balance of stamina and intellect and same with the pants shimmering trousers of the eagle uh, five stamina five intellect this is very similar to an fc build for a druid guys go ahead and slap 24 armor on this same thing that i was explaining before with the uh dark weave breaches you guys want to make sure you guys are having 24 armor on this not 16 24 boost your armor up make yourself a little bit more tanky that does go a long way um, same with the boots. Like I said, these things will never get swapped out with no matter what build you're going for. So always keep these locked in. Um, with the horde, you guys have access to Seal of Sylvanas. Eight stamina is what you guys are going for here. And then you're keeping the lavishly jeweled ring on here um, for the six intellect, guys. Um, if you guys want, you could rock the blood ring uh, or a metal ring. Completely up to you if you want some more stamina. But I would recommend just keeping this here with the build that you guys have. And then the Banshee Rod is going to be used as an FC for the stamina um, and the intellect balance so obviously this is going to be your go-to for that and like i said same thing offhand always will be here no matter what um, and then if you guys want to swap out these two weapons completely up to you the alliance fc is a little different um, you guys have access to the pious leg wraps this comes from a quest um, definitely can have uh, 16 armor on here not 24 so that's the only downside however you guys are getting a lot of stamina and spirit so that's huge uh, since you guys don't have access to the Seal of Sylvanas, you guys are going to slap a Blood Ring on here. Um, same thing like I mentioned before. If you guys don't want to rock the Lavishly Jeweled Ring, another Blood Ring or a uh, Seal of Rin would go just fine. Um, but I recommend this just to keep your hit cap. Uh, not really have a hit cap, but you're keeping a higher hit um, on for you. Um, same thing, you can swap this out if you want to. Shimmering Bracers or the Green Weave, completely up to you. You guys are still using the Bloody Apron. Everyone can get this. This comes from a dungeon. So, I mean, there's really nothing else to it other than make sure you guys are getting your faction uh, designated pieces for your gear. Um, but that's really all there is to a FC. But same thing with a human, uh, like I forgot to mention. Make sure you guys are swapping out this trinket as a human. Uh, you guys can 
uh, have more of, of a variety of things because you guys have a racial trinket. Um, drain eyes are really nice uh, priest as well because of the self heal so you can also put on more heals for somebody but a human priest is also nice because of the uh, offset bonuses that the racial comes with so completely up to you on what race you guys want to go with I don't really designate a certain race for anybody uh, because I believe all races are very vile for anything that you go for um, you can do multiple things for every class that you pick uh, with earlier expansions obviously the later we get into the expansions is where you start getting uh, more race specific because of the changes that were made but obviously those changes weren't made yet so no worries about that whatsoever um, but other than that, that is the gear, so uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the talents and start discussing that. Alright, so with a priest, there is a couple routes that you guys can take. Uh, with the main set that you guys are going to be going with as a healer, you guys are mainly looking at Healing Focus, Improved Renew, and Divine Fury. These are going to be your main go-to talents um, for a healer. You're all around priest. Um, you're mainly looking at preventing pushbacks. You're preventing your casting time and you're increasing your hots. So that's why these two are going to be the go to. These are going to be your main spells that you're going to be casting. Um, so this is why it's essential to have. It's going to be a really good uh, kind of set to go with. However, if you guys are going with a DPS build, there is a few different options that you guys can do. Something that I really like is putting all five into darkness, increasing your shadow spell damage by a whole 10%, and then you're putting the two into shadow word pain. That's increasing your shadow word pain spell by 6%. And then if you really want to go above and beyond, um, and then put another three into here, increasing your spell damage by a whole 3% as well on top of that. So you guys can be really pumping out a lot of damage like a warlock, if you really think about it. In my opinion, a shadow priest and 19 twinks is such a strong caster and it is so underrated like nobody looks at it they look at it and they're just like well there's not really much going on here i'm not going to play it it's just a healer no these guys can be really good dps's as well if you guys really know what you're doing with it and you have the right build for it um, that like brings me to the glyphs so like when it comes to a healer i would recommend the glyph of the inner fire this is increasing your armor from inner fire spell by 50 percent, so that makes you a little bit more tanky um this is really good if you're going to be an all-around priest like fc healer dps whatever the case is but if you really consider yourself being an fc um, on this priest at any point in given time definitely rock this glyph at all times because it's going to help you a lot however if you don't plan on fcing as a priest at all and you're just focusing purely on healing or dpsing then i recommend this talent right here which is the glyph of the power word shield and this is your power word shield also heals the target for 20 percent of the absorption amount so this is like huge think of this like retail um child, the retail shield right now right as you attack that shield, it pretty much heals you a little bit for the amount being damaged, uh, the, de the damage being dealt at that given time. So this is a very good glyph to go for if you're just focusing on healing alone. Um, and then if you're looking at uh, being a DPS, your Dispel Magic spell also heals your target for 3% of maximum health. Um, this is a really good thing to have. If you're trying to be in a competitive scene um, and you're going and defending your FC, this is something that you're going to be dispelling a lot because you're just trying to keep that FC alive. So being able to increase his health by a whole 3% on top of the flag that you guys can be dropping. There's so many different scenarios to increase this FC's health. And this is one thing that you guys can do to be a really good team player and um, be defensive. Obviously, this is going to be a glyph where it's a um, specific uh, scene. It's not so much an everyday type of glyph to rock with so i mean i would recommend these two kind of going in between with um dps healing for this and then if you plan on being an fc um go with this as well now i'm not saying this is just for an fc set this is a good all-around glyph as well for all the specs so it really just depends on you and what you want to benefit more from um this right here is what i would recommend going into a competitive scene i'm just thinking you know for my teammates uh, i want to be able to increase their health a lot keep them up more give them a bigger health pool so that way they're a little bit harder to kill um, but that's just my competitive brain kind of thinking but that's something that i would recommend going into if you guys are trying to do some war games or, or just having a dedicated fc and you guys are doing some pre-mades or whatever the case is you know this is a really good glyph to have as well uh, and then onto your minor glyph you guys are looking at glyph of fortitude there's really no other minor glyph that's worth having other than this and it's just mainly reducing the mana cost of your uh, fortitude um, and prayer of fortitude spells by 50 percent um, obviously 19 twink doesn't have prayer of 
of fortitude they just had the power word fortitude so this is just increasing it or decreasing it by 50 percent um allowing you guys to reapply it if you want to um you guys aren't wasting so much mana on it so the, definitely a really nice minor glyph to have uh pretty similar to the druids uh mark of the wild glyph so that's definitely something that you guys can run into. Um, I'm sure there's other builds out there, but in terms of being uh, just the generic go-to basic BIS uh, type talent type sets, this is these are the two that I would recommend in terms of running. Um, having this route for the healers and then having this route for the DPS. I mean, you could go as much as uh, reducing the stun duration as well. If you find yourself uh, being stunned a lot, being feared a lot, you know, depending on, you know, what type of comps you're going up against, you could take out and take away from the damage a little bit um, and turn it into the stun resistance a little bit for the 18% if you're a DPS. Uh, this is something that I would consider, um, especially for like, you know, arenas. If you want to go into that, this is a really nice thing to have pretty much having the future racial for orc right always with you 24 7 so this is really nice to have um, if you don't want to do that and you just want to keep your dps up that's fine too but it's definitely a route that you guys can take but i definitely would keep this at all times just because it's increasing your overall damage and especially your shadow word pain which is where a lot of your damage is going to be coming from anyways um, i would always keep these up uh totally totally maxed and then having the option to swap kind of between here um this is really good for arenas, but like I said, this is also good for increasing your damage. So whatever you want to prioritize the most, um, whatever that you find yourself lacking the most, um, definitely can go into that. If you find yourself not being CC'd, not being stunned, not being feared, and whatever the case is, obviously rock this. But if you find yourself having all of those issues, you're running to it all the time, and it's becoming such a hassle, then obviously take the talents away from your twin disciplines and put it into the unbreakable will that way you guys have some sort of a reduction and um, it reduces the duration of said uh, CC that was put onto you um, but that's just my recommendations on what I would do for a healer or a DPS on a priest um, I'm sure that like I said before there's other builds out there but these are just my two go-to builds that I would personally run um, in terms of a priest they're just really good really viable um, and very beneficial but other than that, that is pretty much it. Uh, like I mentioned in every video, if you guys have a class recommendation that you guys would like to see first and prioritize it on the list before I get through finishing all of them, I am doing every single class. But if you want to see one before, go ahead and comment that below. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Maybe I forgot something. Go ahead and comment that below. I'm sure everyone else can learn on it. This is meant for uh, this is meant for a learning experience for everybody. So I'm just here to spread the word and help people out. Uh, but other than that. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Uh, it's been Resto, guys. See you guys next time.